Wisconsin Eye's 2014 election coverage is brought to you by the Wisconsin Hospital Association. For over 90 years, a valued voice for Wisconsin hospitals, supporting high quality, high value care in communities like yours. Wisconsin Eye coverage of the 2014 elections continues. We're interviewing State, Repre State Representative Diane Hesselbein. She's a Democrat from Middleton. She's seeking re-election in the 79th Assembly District. Diane, welcome back to Wisconsin Thank Eye. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate this opportunity. And a programming note, Wisconsin Eye appreciates the support of the Wisconsin Hospital Association, which represents more than 139 hospitals and health systems for making these candidate interviews possible. Before we talk about issues, I am always intrigued Two years later, when somebody gets elected, mm -hmm. lessons learned from the first term. Um, you've seen that pamphlet in the Capitol, How a Bill Becomes a Law. Is mm -hmm. it anything close to what act? No, <laughs> not really. You, you know, I, constituents come to me with ideas for bills and things to pass, and so you put up, you know, you do a bill and you work with the reference bureau and you try to figure out if you can make this become law, and then you send out a co-sponsorship and see who's going to sign on to it. And I had a bill passed in the assembly, really happy, and it was signed by Governor Walker of priority registration for veterans in the right. UW and tech schools. Currently, we do it for um, athletes and for uh, people with disabilities, but we never did it for our veterans returning to school. And the first person to sign on was Steve Nass. And so he and I don't always agree on some core issues, mm -hmm. but when it comes to veteran issues, we very much do. So letting some of those things slide and trying to find some common ground on other areas is really important. Was the bruising, the bruising level of partisanship in the assembly an eye-opener for you? It was. It was, because you're just trying to find any common ground that you can agree on, and it seems to be a lot of people are still bitter about what happened with Act 10. And, we, and you know, I get blamed for things that... Are you one of them? No. Well, okay. sometimes they blame me, but I don't, you know, I wasn't there during the 60-hour debate. And then hearing um, often complaints about former Governor Doyle um, that they still bring up, but a lot of us are new in the Assembly, half yes. of us, yes. never served with former Governor Doyle. Right. So why people keep bringing that up, I don't understand. Well, as a new member of the Assembly on the Democratic side, um, what realistically is your top priority? For, for next session if you're reelected? Education. Funding, Education. funding public schools in the UW system is extremely important to me. I think I'm one of the few, my son, older son, is going to UW-Milwaukee on Thursday. And it's really important as I tour the state and look at campuses with him and see what the funding decreases have done to the different universities. Let's, uh, let's talk K-12. Do we sure. need more money? Do we need a new school aid formula? We what need we a school, new school aid formula, yes. But we need to stop funding these private, unaccountable schools. Oh, choice and vouchers? Absolutely. We need to stop that because that's not where we should be going. We're having two systems right now that we're paying for. And I'm in a unique situation because my parents chose to s send me to private school, K through 8, and then I went to La Follette High School. But that was their choice. They didn't ask you to pay for it. Well, um, in terms of choice and vouchers in the next state budget, you'll be pushing to what? Uh, no longer take it statewide and just no have it in those. Statewide. What about those two cities in southeast Wisconsin, Milwaukee and Racine? We have to take a look at that, and I do talk to my Milwaukee colleagues and what they think they should happen there because they're right front and center of what's going on in Milwaukee. But take away the statewide option? Absolutely. Okay. Um, five or six weeks ago, as you know, Governor Walker called for the repeal of Common Core standards. Mm -hmm. What do you think about it? I think that's the wrong direction for Wisconsin. I was on one of the few people on the Common Core subcommittee that traveled around the state of Wisconsin, and we heard directly from parents and teachers some of their concerns, um, and their, some of their concerns simply aren't validated. A lot of people thought there was retinal scanning, and people were testifying that when the kids would take a test with a notebook, that the sweat glands could be interpreted by the computer and be sent off to whoever to do data analysis on that child. It just, these things aren't happening in our public schools. We've been having Common Core. It was done years ago by governors, and the military is all in favor of Common Core because when people get deployed from different places or reassigned, they want to make sure those kids that are moving are at the same playing field with the kids that are in that state. So why would we be hurting our military families? That's what we would be doing with repealing Common Core. Why do parents who care about their kids, why do some of them believe that they involve scans of retinas? It's a lot of misinformation. Where's it coming from? I don't understand where it's coming from. If it's the Heritage Foundation or what's, what these groups are doing to rile people up, but these things aren't happening in our schools. Okay. Let's talk about health care. Um, sure. One in five Wisconsin residents get their health care from the Medicaid program. Mm -hmm. Wisconsin, uh, the American Hospital Association says our Wisconsin reimbursements are second lowest in the nation. 
Maybe you're not, if you've studied the issue, do we need to raise those reimbursements? We do need to raise those reimbursement rates. I'm really thrilled. I have a lot of doctors and nurses and healthcare professionals in the district in um, Middleton and Wanakee, and they were telling me over and over again what's going on in their clinics in the UW and Merida and St. Mary's. Uh, what's going on is the cost shifting. Are you referring cost to? Shifting, absolutely, and no. not being reimbursed. Okay, transportation is one of the biggest decisions, according to the Taxpayers Alliance, that next legislature will be voting on. Taxpayer Alliance says if we fund transportation at the 2013 levels for 10 years, we'll be $2 billion short. Do you believe that? If there is a deficit, how would you fix it? I believe that. I think Taxpayer Alliance does a really good job, first of all. And I think the governor did a nice job when he actually had a bipartisan group get together and look at these issues. I know uh, Representative Call was on there, former Mayor Dave Touchlovich was on there. It was very bipartisan and they had specific examples of what we could do, but unfortunately none of those are being looked at. So whether it's a five cent sales tax that we need to be doing on our gas tax, or whether it's really looking at um, transportation and tolls, I think we really need to be moving forward with something bold. What about the idea that, that also, also serviced as part of the task force, that you and I should report annually how many miles we've traveled? Would you consider that? I don't know how reliable that would be um, to see who's traveling how far. I'm not sure people would all report in. Um, do you think the $75 you and I pay to register our vehicle is too low? Um, I'd be curious what all the other states are doing next to us. What are Minnesota and Iowa doing? Uh, Iowa, it depends on the age of the vehicle and the cost mm -hmm. of the vehicle. I think we should be looking at that then. Okay. You know that there's going to be, Bill, uh, legalized medical marijuana mm -hmm. and traveling with that is legalizing recreational marijuana. Your positions? Um, I believe that for medicinal purposes, marijuana should be allowed for the patient. I think there are many cases where it can help patients. As far as legalizing marijuana outright, I'm not sure. I talked to a lot of law enforcement and I know um, there was something on the TV just a few weeks ago where they're doing big studies about 18-year-olds, um, 19-year-olds using marijuana, the brain studies that they're doing and seeing what the long-term effects of that are. So I'm not there. Okay. An issue on the environment, um, one of the first bills that did pass last session, the uh, Gugibic, uh, allowed Gugibic to apply for that permit for an mm -hmm. open pit iron mine. Should that bill be revisited, amended, should it be tweaked? Oh, well, I don't think we should have a mine up there, first okay. of all, at all. And then, you know, with what happened just this past weekend with all those documents saying that the company gave $700,000. What's your reaction to that? I think it's terrible. I was amazed and horrified. I mean, Wisconsin shouldn't be bought and sold, and we shouldn't be passing bills just because somebody's giving donations. I thought it was absolutely awful, just awful, and I think it's, was, I've lived in Wisconsin most of my life, and this isn't the Wisconsin that I know and love. You shouldn't be able to buy legislation for any cost, for any reason. Do you think most of the Republicans that passed that bill were aware of Gogebic $700,000, which, as you say, was just as close over the weekend? I don't know. I'd like to think that they, don't, they didn't, but I'm not sure. I think they should be asked. I think everybody running for office, every Republican, should be asked that question. Um, which calls up the issue of campaign finance. Is that one of your priorities? If so, yes. what? Uh, well, uh, there's been so many court rulings now, it kind of leaves our campaign finance laws in disarray. What do you think should be some of the premises of campaign finance laws changes? I think, I think everything should be disclosed of who's giving what and to what group. I don't like these third you know, groups that are putting things out there. We don't know who's paying for it. We don't know where they're from. I think it's ridiculous. Who's trying to buy our state? Because that's pretty much what they're trying to do. And I want to know if it's the Koch brothers, if they're giving to Americans for Prosperity, or if they're, be they're giving to Club for Growth, whatever they're giving to. Let's find out who's trying to rig our elections. Um, do you have, are you pushing any tax code changes next year? Not right now. Not, not right time. now. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, an issue that always comes up, first offense, drunken driving. Should it be a crime? Well, um, I don't think it should be a felony. I worry about that. I think um, second, third, yes, let's revisit that, but I'm not sure having the first time a felony is going to stop somebody from getting into a car when they're drinking. Um, and I also worry about what that does for employment and for housing and having it follow them for the rest of their lives. I worry about that as well. I think definitely alcohol is a problem in the state of Wisconsin, um, and we, we need to talk about it and talk about it very seriously. The Republicans passed three tax cuts in the last 18, 20 months. If that triggers a deficit, a projected deficit, how should that deficit be made up in the next budget? You know, it's a great question. I didn't vote for those tax cuts for the most wealthy people in the state of Wisconsin. Is that the reason? Yes. 
That's the reason. Okay. Um, because if you're going to be giving tax cuts, you need to be giving people a moderate income, and you need to give people the tools to get out of poverty, and that's not what um, my colleagues in the Assembly want to do right now. And so it is going to be a big problem. I'm not sure what their ideas are ever going to be to m make that disaster better for the state of Wisconsin. Okay. Um, any other issues that are central to your campaign I haven't had a chance to ask about? I don't think so. Education funding, our UW system, I think uh, right now there's a there's a movement to privatize our AFSCME workers at the UW campuses. It's happening already, and I think that's the wrong way to go, and that's the wrong way to treat our working people you, in Wisconsin. Are you going to push to overturn Act 10? Yes, four I years? will. You Absolutely. Will. All of it? Mm -hmm. Every okay. Let's talk about the UW. Do you support uh, the Governor Walker? Said as he's is he, if he's governor, he's going to push for a second two-year tuition freeze. Good idea. I don't think it's a good idea. Not when he keeps cutting the aid that they're getting for the UW and for our tech schools. And what are they supposed to do? Where are they supposed to come up with this money? And I'm a parent who now is going to have a freshman at University of Wisconsin Milwaukee, and I know that um, tuition is tough. And I know how much that's been raised when I was at UW Oshkosh years ago, 22 years ago. It's just so expensive now. It's, it's amazing to see what it is like now. But I still believe in the UW. I believe in their research. I believe in having top-notch teachers. I believe in having an AFSCME employment. Um, and I believe in our workers. Pursuing on the UW, were you surprised uh, at the disclosures of the cash balance that the system was sitting on? I was surprised, but I wasn't alarmed. I think that often they had a cash balance because they had programs moving and coming and they still want to attract the best talent to teach there as well. And so when we're cutting off their funding, when we're saying we really don't want a cash balance, where are we putting them? And are they going to be living, you know, month to month on this, this really dicey situation? Has Ray Cross been able to build bridges back to most uh, uh, members of the Assembly and Senate that um, perhaps his predecessor hadn't built? I think so. Ray Cross is doing a really good job reaching out to us, and he, um, you know, met. I think he, I saw him roaming the building right after it was announced, meeting with everybody on at colleges and universities, just popping in their office, saying hello and introducing himself if they didn't know him already. That goes a long way, a very long way, with legislators. So, so that 95 million they ask for uh, is justified. I believe it is. Okay. Um, finally, you want to contrast uh, you and your opponent on November 4? Sure. Well, I have only met my opponent, and I haven't had a chance to debate him yet, so I'm looking forward to that. But that's one reason I'm really happy Wisconsin I allows candidates to come forward so people can watch it. So thank you for the service. It's a public service. Well, thank you very much. Representative Diane Hesselbein of Middleton is a Democrat seeking re-election in the 79th Assembly District. Diane, welcome back to Wisconsin I. Thank you so much. Thank you.